Finally! Hobo Tom is back to what Hobo Tom should be doing. Oh, hello folks. Welcome back. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late. Um, last week was kind of chaotic. It was spa week for me, and you know me. I enjoy a good spa week. Need that. If I don't take care of myself, who is going to take care of me? Go to my notebook notes. I'll be doing this again for Raw tonight. Um, that video will probably be going up tomorrow. Actually, today I'll be getting two videos up. I'll be this one. Let's see here. Andre Chase. Is that still wild? Ooh, there we go. Oh, wow, this was a long one. Or was it? Jeez, it was long. Impressive. As you saw in the video, or saw in the little thumbnail of the ever beautiful Nixon Newell. I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom, and I know it's, it's not Tuesday, it's not Soup Day. This was from last week, because also Tuesday, the way my week went, Tuesday I did my, I took notes, because that was my last spa day. Wednesday, I forget what I did Wednesday. I think I did the, the AEW live reactions. Thursday I worked at Rockville. Friday I worked at Rockville. Saturday, Sunday I also worked at Rockville. Boom goes the dynamite. So I'm done with that for now. So it's time for me to catch up. Um, very quick news and notes. Oh, that's right. No one's said anything to me. I feel sad. Oh, I'll make this go quicker because that's less stuff I have to, less people I have to talk to. This week's an odd week. Another, another odd week. Um... So, I'll be doing uh, this and a worker's perspective of Rockville. We should be rated R, mainly because of bikinis and booty and just fat asses, as Scott Steiner would say. And a wrestler thrown in there, too. Um, Tuesday, I'll be doing a reactions Tuesday soup day. Very typical of me. Wednesday is just going to be another reaction. Um, Thursday. Thursday, I'm going to be doing dual predictions. Friday, I'm working at night, so there will be no SmackDown or AEW show. Saturday, oh wait, it's still going to be one prediction this week. Saturday, I'm off. Saturday, I'm actually working. Sunday, depending when and or if I'm working, because this is Memorial Day weekend. I'll be doing an R R and R show for AEW Double or Nothing, and then Monday it's going to be a double show because I'll put up Memorial Day Madness here at the Daytona Beach Bonfire League, followed up by Raw SmackDown AEW. I don't work the racetrack in June. At least I don't think so. I should really check that too. Yeah, I might do that <laughs> while I work here. ETS. Um, it'll also be another predictions video for Hell for Hell in a Cell, I think. Is that first Sunday in June? It's kind of back here. So if I seem a little bit yawny and I seem a little bit redder, it's because I was in the sun for a lot. So you know what, with all that being said, too long of an intro, let's talk about NXT. Ooh, yeah. This was one of those interesting shows. Um, starts off with a little tag match, tag match, tag match action. We have Trick Williams and Carmella Hayes versus Solo Sokoa. Uso, who are now unified champions. As I so got to finally watch my highlights. Great splash through the table. That's good. And to the moon. Cameron Grimes. Um, kind of a... The heels tried to jumpstart the match, but no. Williams, uh, Grimes, and Sokoa came right back after that. Solo Sokoa. He does that Samoan headbutt. Again, number one headbutt. is always a Samoan headbutt. 
then the faces, they double team the heels in their corner. Sol Sokoa learned something from his sister in law, Naomi. That's going to be a weird family gathering eventually. I have to trim this up. I have to, yeah, I have to trim this up for Saturday. It's going to be this is, this is actually longer than this, I think. Which is good, which is the way I want it. It makes it look more dignified. Especially to impress that one hot chick that works with me. But no, I can't even call her chick. She's, she's a woman. Yeah. I like that. I like women. Not girls. Women. So let's see here. Um, oh, yeah, where was I? Yeah. So you probably learned that hip tech from Naomi, his sister in law. Again, that's going to be interesting for a while with the whole bunch of them. Uh, the heels eventually sweep uh, Solo off his feet when he gets to the side. Uh, beat him up for a little bit. Then Grimes gets a hot tag. That was pretty fun. Then he hits that big crossbody, which always looks good. Solo hits a big. Solo Sako tags himself in. It's a big splash of his own. Solo Sako and Cameron Grind wins. What solid match? Cheeseburger match. Then we got pretty deadly interview. And I think they just want to shag. What's her face? Um, then we get into. Tayton Paxley and Lash Legend. And I was... <laughs> Jeez. I was getting ready for Rockville too early. Two things I noted on the, on the sidebar here. Yes. See here, these are like... These are normal notes. These are like bad notes. Or naughty notes or... Observations, as I like to call them. Tatum and Paxley had something wrong, or growing, or cut. Something on her inner thigh, because there was like a big gash, it was a scar or something. Either that, or it was a really fresh bruise, because it looked nasty. And I'll tell you what, Tatum and Paxley, when she gets her, when she gets wedgified by Lash Legend, man, she has some creamy white in her butt cheek but yeah enough about those rantings and ravings let's talk about the match itself uh, match itself was okay this was for the breakout women's uh, a breakout for the women's in NXT which is okay um, stuff like this again oh NXT is going to be back to touring which is good. They're going to be doing the Florida House Show. I may or may not go to Jacksonville to watch them. I'm waiting for them to come more so. I don't like the Englewood place in Orlando. That's a little bit of a trip. Mainly because it's literally like the hood. I might... Eventually they will come back here to Daytona Beach. They like doing that. Also, WWE is coming to Daytona Beach. I probably mentioned that, so I get to more put more stuff in that door of wrestling, I hope, which would be good. But yeah, that's another little kind of side note there. Uh, Lash Legend, good running elbow. Bunch of kicks from Lash Legend. She actually has pretty long legs. She's actually pretty good at striker. Uh, Tatum, got the head scissors, all the basic stuff. Basement dropkick, which was good. Again, that, that knee... Uh, Lash Legends put the knee torque on Tatum Paxley with a stretch muffler. Uh, Lash Legend hits a pump kick. Tatum Paxley, she said, yeah, I'm a strong woman. I'm a power lifter. She could not deadlift Lash Legend. Lash Legend eventually pinned Tatum Paxley. Wasn't a bad match. Ham sandwich match. Then we had Tony D'Angelo talking, whatever. I find it funny. I'm like, Santos Escobar just said, Hey, Tony, you, 
Oh, wow, that was great. And there's Duke Hudson. In the background, I was like, what am I doing here? I was stuck with this loser, and then he left. She left. I'll be okay, though. Uh, Braun Breaker comes out. Uh, again, I think my co-worker and I were talking. Braun Breaker looks like his dad and sounds like his uncle. It's, again, he is probably the two, two of the greatest teachers ever, including, I don't know if, I don't know if, the, the, if, if Grandpa Steiner would still be alive. Uh, then Joe Gacy comes out. Joe Gacy I'm warming up to. He does have to lose the Druid, Druid guy, so that's very Undertaker-ish. Um, whatever. If they were just like two emo guys or two goth guys or two, I don't know, like weirdos with them, that'd be better. There was an Indy Hartwell promo. She's all hot broken. You made fun of me, Mandy Rose. I'm going to go all Aussie on you. Uh, Wesley was there. Um, MSK was a f was an okay was a fun was a fun different change of pace tag team for NXT. I do like them better as the Rascals in Impact. That was fun. They had a little bit more freedom again. Once Carter Nash slapped around my princess Kimberly. Yeah, that was the end of that. Then with the Viking Raiders versus the Creed Brothers. This was actually a pretty good match. Uh, the Creed Brothers. Good technical wrestling. Oh, their math skills are amazing. Uh, the Viking Raiders, a little more fisticuffs, a little more, brut more brutish. Again, they always do the big double team moves on either Brutus. Uh, Brutus did hit a deadlift German on, I want to say, Ivar. That's impressive. Julius, can have, he has a great drop kick too. I don't. I still don't know how people get that high on drop kicks. Again, then there was some of the, the the Brutus ball, which is I guess a cannonball is something by Brutus. However, the Raiders they slam Brutus off the second rope. That looked good. Then they hit the German suplex, but they could not. They hit the German suplex, but could not suplex Ivar. And of course, all four men beat up in the ring. Viking Raiders hit the big double team power slam combination thing they do. Viking Raiders win. Creed Brothers eventually were going to drop Roderick Strong. Either that or they're going to have a match with Roderick Strong and the new guy. Overall, this match, cheeseburger match. Which is on the next page. Oh, that's the last match. Then we'd end and Andre Chase versus Grace and Walla. Grace and Walla wins, but yeah, this is good. Uh, Andre he does this the spinning neck breaker. He actually has some good good classic pro wrestling moves. Walla, a little bit more ground and pound, a little bit more brawlerish, a little more Aussie ish, I guess. It's a suplex, Andre Chase, the, the Phoenix Sunset drop. That's always good. To, that's always amazing how they don't blow their knees out. Like Seth Rollins. Don't even get me started on Seth Rollins and Becky Lynch. I just said it, it's big time Becky Lynch. Now it's big meth Becky Lynch. She's been hitting that. Yeah, she's been hitting that hard. With her haircut, the way her face looks. She is getting some, some mommy flapjacks that are going on. Not necessarily as a bad thing. A little bit too much. I think just because she's lost so much weight, there's nothing there to, to, to support what, what babies need. But yeah, um, Andre Chase again. He had the, the catapult in the top rope. Then the Chase he subs. C H A S E U. What does that spell? Chase you. <laughs> Actually, that's pretty good. And then 
He sends Grayson Waller into Brody on the outside. While Andre Chase is distracted, Waller does that, like, through the ropes cutter. That's actually pretty impressive, too. He jumped through the ropes, do a somersault, hit a cutter. Intriguing. Grayson Waller wins, though. I can't say anything bad about it. Cheeseburger match. <laughs> oh, what's this? This is um pretty deadly. Or someone looking at Gigi. These boob eyes. Yep. Um, little toxic attraction promo. There's some Creed stuff. Pretty deadly show up. Uh, Roderick Strong is the other guy. Yeah, whatever. Then there was another match. Uh, Roxanne Perez versus Kiana James. Kiana James is agile. I think she's been around for a while. When they were doing pure squash matches with Nia Jax, I think she was one of them, one one of the many competitors that got squashed by Nia Jax and just kind of like hung around NXT. This again is a match that probably should have gone on the Florida House Show circuit first, before on TV. And I've debated that with some friends. It's like I think the whole COVID thing and not having the Florida House Show really hurt some of the really brand new wrestlers. It didn't give them the experience in front of a crowd. Now they're trying to say, yep, now you're going to be on TV. You'll be like, it's like putting me in front of TV. It's like, like yep, you know, you've made some videos. You're on TV now. I'd be like, uh, hi, mom and dad. But yeah, it's probably a horrifying experience. Like, I'm just the nerves, the butterflies. Ooh, yeah. The butterflies of fire in the stomach. Yeah. 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 Um, again, Roxanne Perez, I learned, was, was Roxy. <laughs> I'm like, I just learned something. John Jones has been around NXT for a while. Uh, again, she's very agile. Both amazingly beautiful, very small, petite women. As I've realized at Rockville... Women are either really petite and too small or just too large. Very few in between until they get to be about 40 to 50 years old. Yeah, those younger gals, they, they're either really small or a little bit too wide. And wearing clothes they probably shouldn't be leaving the house in. That's a whole other issue. But yeah, uh, let's see here. What else about this match? Again... Roxanne Perez, the arm drag to drop kick, great combination. Uh, Keanu James has the bow and arrow down. This was actually probably the better match than the first one. Uh, she could not get the Boston Crab on, though. The tilt to world backstabber, that still looks great. Roxanne Perez, the side Russian leg sweep. And then she hit the Lucha, the, like the delayed Lucha Destroyer. Roxanne Perez wins. You know what? I'm not biased against anyone. This is a cheeseburger match. Then we had um, Blade and Enoughy making fun of Tony Delangelo and his, I don't know, those two guys as goons. That's all that was. There was a Roxanne interview. Then Cor Jade showed up, then Electra Lopez shows up. Electra Lopez is more women than both of those two ladies combined. I'll just say that. My preference would be towards Electra Lopez. Cor Jade looks like, I don't know, skinny schoolgirl. Roxanne Perez looks a little taller. Not by much, though. But yeah, Electra Lopez, she's all woman. Then the next match we had Wesley versus Nathan Frazier. This was like. Oh, I also heard, again, in my sidebar notes, when the ref hit two, the crowd was a, the crowd must have been bored. They were, sweet, one, two, sweet. So that was good to hear again. 
It's nice to hear that crowd getting up in noise and volume. This was a fun match. Fast for rope running. This was a, if you blink, you miss something. That's good. I like it when they switch up the pace in, N in NXT. Show off many different styles, not just have the traditional. Um, some do call it plotting. WWE style. It's not plotting. It's, it's very. It's more deliberately paced, I think, than plotting. Oh, you get the Randy Orton headlock mania versus Triple H. Or you get some of the older people from WWE in. Yeah, it's a little bit more, more headlock and chinlock mania. But again, still, it's pretty good. Again, this is a great refresher. Uh, again, great fast rope running by both. Again, Wesley, he still does that stuff. A little bit more Lucha style, a lot more string things together. Uh, Wes, he, again, he snaps the ropes when Nathan Frazier's there. Um, he tries, he does a splash, that's really good. Uh, winds up on the outside, and Nathan Frazier eventually hits a dive. Uh, Wes hits a, uh, counters the suplex. That was... Uh, they did matching cross bodies. And then Von Wagner comes in and wrecks both of them. Oh, it's going so well. You know what? This is a ham sandwich match. Von Wagner did not have to get involved for this. Then the main event of the evening, we had Tony D'Angelo. Versus Iho del Fantasmo. No, I can't. It's not Santos Escobar, also known as Iho del Fantasmo, also known as King Cuerno. Yeah, now he's Santos Escobar again. Legado del Fantasma. That's great. Uh, both, both people's goons stay in the back. Uh, let's see, Santos Escobar, so much better technical wrestling. Tony, a little bit more ground and pounder. Very typical, what do you think of Italian mafioso? He likes to use these. Io del Fantasma is much more the technical wrestler. Um, again, D'Angelo, he does have some wrestling moves. The neck breaker on the ropes. And the swing neck breaker. Then he takes... The, puts. See, this is how you use a headlock. When you put the headlock, you lean against the ropes, and you use that rope to rake your opponent's eyes. Again, the heel-on-heel -heel tactics. Rakes that again, rakes um, Santos Escobar's eyes along the ropes. Very good. Again, Santos Escobar. Big drop kick, man. He gets some ups. Uh, then he does like a, a very leggy version of a hammer lock somehow. That looked great. Tony D'Angelo, belly to belly. Santos Escobar. The Frankensteiner. That's great to see. Um, what was that? Oh, it's going. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, nice. That, that probably makes sense. Um, Tony D'Angelo went looking for his crowbar. So then, I'll still call him Raul Mendoza and DJZ come out. Say, hey, Tony, looking for this? Whereas in the corner, underneath the ropes, are the brass knuckles. So with the referee distracted by the rest of the guy del Fantasma, ref turns his back. Santos Escobar slips on the brass knucks, plops, KOs Tony D'Angelo, then turns around, does the very wrestler thing, puts, of course, the brass knuckles back in his trunks, pins Tony D'Angelo. That was so good. That was a classic heel-on-heel -heel match. I liked it. The one heel wrestler had his goon steal the other heel wrestler's gimmick item. He has his own gimmick item. And then, of course, the classic putting back in the trunks. I don't know, that harkens me back to the good old days of the NWA, AWA, all that stuff. 
I'm gonna upgrade this. This is a surf and turf match. And then finally the shot, Joe Gacy. All is gone according to the way I've foreseen, man. All is gone according to the way I have foreseen. <laughs> um, so that was pretty good. Something, use of whatever. I don't know. I can't even read my own handwriting at that point. I just told I get home. So that was NXT. That was a pretty entertaining show. It was different to actually sit on the couch and watch it. Couldn't shit post with the other people, but that's okay. I can deal with that. 